Hi, all. Um, welcome to the Key Conversations webinar as part of Parent Orientation. Um, we are really excited to be here. And when I say we, I'm my co-facilitator, and we also have Emily G, who's going to be helping sort of behind the scenes. So first and foremost, I'm just going to introduce myself. I'm Mary Jo. I work at Wolverine Wellness, which is a unit within Student Life. And I'm going to be co-facilitating with my fearless partner, that's me. Uh, my name is Felicia McCreary. I use she, her pronouns, and I work in the Office of Student Conflict Resolution. So happy to be here with everybody. Next slide. So really our purpose of today is to just spend some time with you about um, really thinking about how we maximize the student experience and, and, and sort of what the role of um, uh, Michigan and parent family members can be as we do this. And so really trying to um, give you an idea of sort of the Michigan values, what we talk about when you hear the words expect respect, that we really have a whole student perspective that we don't just sort of think about students as just what they do in the classroom or what they do at their job, but really think about them as a whole student and what their, their complete Michigan experience looks like on campus and where support is for them. And then really talk about some of what we know to be um, really important conversations that parents and family members have with their students. Um, before they come, but also as a continuing conversation. And so we'll talk about, a little bit about what that looks like today. Next slide. And Felicia and I are really representing a body of work of lots of different units on campus. And so the division that we are in really is called student life. And if you think about anything that sort of happens with the student outside of the classroom, um, housing, dining, health, um, navigating conflict, those kinds of things, those are the kinds of units that are in student life. Um, one unit in particular really is sort of a glue to many units, and that is the Dean of Students Office. We'll talk about it again at the very end, but the Dean of Students Office really is a central place for students, parents, families, and those who support them to really help navigate some of the complex issues, but also navigate to other resources on campus. So that's one that we'll remember. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, Emily, I'll talk just a little bit about the other units um, that we're representing today. So as I said, um, my, I'm from Wolverine Wellness. Um, that really is a campus wellness resource center. Um, if you think about um, some of the big public health issues on campus, um, whether it's alcohol and other drugs, uh, stress, anxiety, those kinds of things, but really helping students understand what their wellness resources are. Then the Office of Student Conflict Resolution, which Felicia told you that she is representing, that really is our, our unit which promotes a safe and scholarly community in which students navigate conflict in a peaceful, socially just, and self-reflexive manner. Um, state of the art, a really uh, unit on campus which does really cool work. And then finally, our Sexual Assault Prevention and Awareness Center. You will hear people refer to that as SAPAC. Um, and uh, it, that really is an educational uh, uh, resource for students. It also provides confidential support for survivors and collaborates with other offices to offer trainings, programs, um, and community engagement. You can go to the next, Emily. Okay, and so we've shared uh, some information about the different offices that we have on campus and the services they've offered. Um, we wanna take some time to talk about the values that the University of Michigan has for our campus community. Uh, so the list of values that you see on your screen, um, these have been uh, generated by our campus community. Uh, we review them every few years uh, and recently went through that process this past year to think about how we would like to be in relationship with both each other and as a community. So these values really inform how we treat one another and how we expect to be treated as members of the Michigan community. Uh, all of our members uh, agree to uphold and live these values during their time here at the university. Uh, they serve as the, the values serve as a guidepost uh, for behavioral expectations of students 
through the Statement of Student Rights and Responsibilities, uh, which is the main body of policies uh, on student expectations for student behavior uh, that is housed in the Office of Student Conflict Resolution. Uh, and at the same time, we also know that students come to campus with their own values that have been informed by their own lived experiences. Uh, a core component to student success is knowing their own values um, and identifying ways to live them out. Um, so engaging in behaviors that align with these, these value systems. Uh, and a resource that we have on campus that helps students in these efforts is called Expect Respect. Uh, this is a campaign designed to promote Michigan values and serve as a support for when these values are not being lived out. As a program, it continues to support the goals of diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, which are central to our Michigan community. Uh, community members who experience treatment counter to the Michigan values uh, can find support and resources to repair the harm to both themselves and to the community from every office in student life. And if you'll go to the next slide, Emily. We are going to jump into our, our first question uh, for the, the audience, the, the parents on this call. Uh, so what we will do is um, I'm going to ask this question. I'll read out the question and then the responses. And then if you all don't mind putting your responses in the chat, uh, Emily will give us a, a little summary of what uh, we hear. So the question is, of the following options, which contributes most to student success? A, being involved on campus. B, remaining connected to friends and family. C, knowing campus resources. D, utilizing effective study habits. Or E, engaging in healthy health promoting practices. And so feel free to put those in the chat. All right, we're getting quite a few A's and B's, D's, and then I saw one, all of the above. Um, someone added D along with time management, um, which I think is a great addition. Um, another all, a couple more A's, um, E, so really all across the board. Okay, yes, we have a spectrum of responses. Uh, and thank you for the additions that were put in. Um, yeah, in fact, there is no one right answer uh, to this poll. Uh, decades of research show that there are key components that make up student success. Uh, and what you see on your screen here is really just the summary of that. So uh, all of the, the, the above um, is uh, important uh, key components to student success. Uh, along with living into and exploring their values, we encourage your students to think about their plan for engaging with all of them across campus uh, and engaging with what campus has to offer and how to maximize their Michigan experience. Uh, and remind them to connect with campus resources uh, that are available to support their life here. Uh, in terms of practicing health promoting behaviors, uh, just to give you um, some examples, this could really look like asking for help uh, when or if they're struggling, prioritizing sleep, nutrition, movement, uh, and learning coping skills for navigating the ups and downs of life. And I will pass it to my co-presenter, Mary Jo. Thank you, Felicia. Um, I mentioned at the very beginning of our, um, our session today that we really take this whole student view. And so what we're sharing with you right now is actually the model of well-being that we use at the University of Michigan. And um, so, and Two fun facts about this model that you're seeing is it actually was designed and created by students, by U of M graphic design students. Um, as we were really talking about how are we going to talk about holistic well-being. And so a couple of things I'm just going to show you about the model is that it is very intentionally not sort of a, a, a measuring stick. It's this idea that our well-being is fluctuating and it is interdependent on everything that the pedal touches. So, um, Emily, if you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll just show you what, 
how we communicate with students is to really sort of dive deep into each one of the areas of, of well-being and to ask them to think about themselves as not just sort of what is my grade in this class, um, what is the job I'm going to get, how physically fit am I, but really understand how those things are interdependent on each other um, and what makes a, a, a whole student and a whole student experience. So go ahead, Emily, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh. Sorry, Felicia, oh. handing it oh. to you. Yeah, no worries. We're going to jump into uh, another poll. Uh, so same rules apply. If you could answer in the chat, uh, we'll have Emily look at those. So the following characteristics, which is the most important to have in a healthy relationship? A, honesty. B, respect. C, open communication. D, trust. Or E, shared values. Seems like people caught on to the idea of answering all of the above. <laughs> so we're getting quite a few of those and then a couple of um, D's and B's, um, C as well, but I, a lot of all of the above. Yeah, yes, you know, um, and I would say that in a lot of ways, a lot of these are interconnected. So even if you did ask her, ask, answer one, uh, there are aspects and components of each uh, interwoven uh, through each of the responses. So let's take some time uh, to talk about what a healthy relationship looks like uh, with your students and having those conversations. We'll go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, research shows us that parents who have open conversations with their students have a significant impact on their students' own exploration of healthy relationships and decision making. Uh, the more a person understands of their own values, uh, the more comfortable and easy it will be to have a conversation with others. Uh, we also know that based on college student development theory, students in college are evaluating their personal values in relation to the values of others and determining what their values actually are as they become an adult. Uh, and, and these are not just tips uh, for romantic relationships. Um, you can think about this information uh, with the student at the center in the context of family, friends, roommates, new roommates, uh, sorority sisters, and the list goes on. It is not exhaustive. Um, before your student transitions to campus here, we encourage you to talk with your students about healthy relationships that they have observed and what they want to see in their own relationships. So continuing those conversations. Uh, and it might be helpful to ask your student who their relationship role models are and why. Um, it's important to recognize that conflict uh, can occur in healthy relationships uh, and, and is absolutely normal. Uh, and that communication styles uh, are different. We're all coming in uh, with different communication styles. So helping your students identify uh, those different conflict and communication styles can be able to, um, it can be very important in helping us to resolve a conflict peacefully. And if you'll jump to the next slide, you may have guessed it, we're gonna jump into another poll. Uh, so this one, only two, uh, two answers to choose from, true or false. Most incoming first year students at the University of Michigan understand how to get consent for sexual activity. Um, it looks like the majority um, are saying false. I've had a, there's a couple of A's um, and then someone asking if we will be teaching them this as well. Good question. And we'll share a little bit more of that in a, in a moment. Um, but the answer to this poll um, is false. Uh, and this is one of those things that uh, where semantics and nuance uh, become really important. Uh, so yes, data shows that when we ask first year students, do they understand the concept 
of consent, they'll say yes. Uh, but when it comes to the skill, actually um, doing the doing, the getting consent, um, that's when the number um, we see that go down. Um, and this is a great reminder that oftentimes, just because we know something, it doesn't always mean we know how to do it. Uh, information alone doesn't change behavior. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, uh, we're going to talk about this in, um, uh, in the context of healthy relationships. Um, so part of the reason we talk about this in particular uh, is because consent is a skill that will serve students, not just during their time here at Michigan, um, but through in uh, their entire lives. So yes, we're going to spend time uh, introducing, affirming, and checking in with students as it relates to consent skills uh, and building healthy relationships. Uh, and your gut reaction might be that they not understand it fully. And that really came across in the, the poll. Um, so one thing that we will do is to establish a baseline definition of what consent is, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, so some important factors about consent that we'll be helping students understand uh, is that consent is clear and unambiguous. It is enthusiastic and it is an ongoing process. So just because someone consents to something at one point in time doesn't mean that they consent to something all the time. Um, so these are the kinds of things that we'll stress with students. Uh, we'll also reinforce that sexual activity must include consent from all involved parties and that alcohol and other drug use may impair a person's ability to give and or obtain consent. So if and when uh, they do make the decision, um, our information and guidance to them is in helping them understand consent in terms of the legal framework, uh, which is what you see laid out here. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that we really stress and underscore these really powerful conversations uh, about the complexity and overlap um, of uh, these issues. Uh, so we are talking about consent in the context of sexual activity. But we also know that consent is a foundational skill for all relationships. Um, think about roommate situations. Uh, you know, students might be wanting to share food, uh, share screen time, uh, maybe even share clothes. Uh, so uh, think about this in terms of uh, introducing these foundational skills. Uh, and we recognize that uh, consent skills, building the skill will go beyond sexual activity and be something that will be imperative throughout the rest of their lives. And with that, Mary Jo, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Yeah, we're, we are gonna keep this uh, quiz going, um, but we're gonna shift gears just a little bit to talk a little bit about alcohol and other drugs on campus. Um, but would like to hear your perspectives. Which of the following best describes how you, you as parent, family member, a supporter of a student, view alcohol use by first year students? A, it is illegal and they should not do it. B, many college students drink it as part of college, let them have some fun. A, a young adult brain is still developing, so I believe alcohol use should be prevented. D, I don't mind if as long as they get good grades. And E, students feel social pressure to drink and are unsure of how to say no. Just take a few minutes or a few seconds to just put in your answer there. All right, right now I'm seeing mostly C's and E's coming in through the chat. Um, and then a couple of E's and a couple of A's. Um, and one none of the above. One none of the above. And and unlike um, some of our previous questions where it was like all of the above, one <laughs> of the really interesting things we just want to note here is that how diverse the answers were just from all of you, right? And so as a reflection of sort of the diversity of answers of if we were asking your students these exact same question, how do they view it? The diversity of answers would be across the continuum as well. And so really our job as we're thinking about it is we all come to campus with really different um, ideas about how we view alcohol use on campus. And so Emily, if you go to the next slide, 
a couple of things that I can I can um, really just say is that students come to campus sort of across this continuum that you see at the bottom. We have students that come from no drinking experience, didn't have it. We have some students who have had a drinking experience or more as part of their high school experience. We have some maybe, and for those of you who are just going through sort of graduation season, right? Maybe they are now what they would consider more of an active drinker. We have more than sometimes what you might think to choose not to drink at all. And we have a fair amount of students who are in recovery, right? And so really our job is to support students all across the continuum. Um, and with the, 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 that alcohol and other drug use doesn't impact their ability to achieve their full potential. So a couple of things that we just wanna talk a little bit about is when the pandemic hit and everybody sort of closed down, we saw a dramatic decrease in alcohol and other drug related harm right, as social events were canceled, as people were sort of isolating. And we don't really know the full, will there be a full pendulum swing? Because we didn't really see that last fall. And so we are really closely monitoring sort of what that looks like. Um, risky alcohol and other drug use is a public health issue across all campuses. So for those of you who have students at other campuses, this is not a unique thing to the University of Michigan. Really what we're hoping to do is help you um, understand how we approach it here and also what the resources are here. So one of the things that we make sure everybody knows is sometimes we'll ask students, how are you doing? If they say I'm doing good in class, we use that as just the only marker of they must be doing okay. And what we just wanna remind people is substance use can disrupt lots of other things other than grades. We can have students at the University of Michigan who get high grades and are still experiencing harm in lots of other ways. So it can disrupt sleep. It can really fluctuate with mood, relationships, as we said in that other one, brain development. Um, so there's lots of different ways really to, to think about talking about this. And we really do use a comprehensive approach um, to make sure that we are, uh, uh, being able to address and provide resources and resources to people along that in continuum um, that you see at the bottom. The other thing I, it's really important to note is that um, the city of Ann Arbor, the state of Michigan it may have different laws than the laws and the ordinances from where your student might be coming from. So I, really important for our, our students who are coming from out of state or even across the world to make themselves familiar with the laws, policies, and ordinances in Ann Arbor, at the University of Michigan, and in the state of Michigan. Um, and that has often been told to me by other parents. That was a great starting point, is just saying, let's just see what the landscape is around these issues when we come to Ann Arbor. Go ahead, Emily, you can go to the next slide. I want to just take a special uh, moment to just talk about the influence of family members in these in these conversations because it's not just a oh we hope you'll do it or it's sort of a good idea it's also really clear in research that the conversations that families have about substance use with a student before they get to campus is a huge influence on their behavior when they get here and I know that's hard as a, a parent of two folks who went through college, you can feel like they're not listening. They have their earphones on, they're paying attention to other things, but the research is really clear that when we ask students what are the biggest influences, they often talk about their family members. So to talk about the start these conversations, and, and as Felicia had mentioned earlier, and how their values inform the choices that they make and how they make. And if they have that conversation before they get here, their values are more likely to be that guiding light for them, right? It, it turns down the noise sort of that they may be hearing. Um, and that, that parent-family-based interventions combined with other harm reduction strategies really lead to fewer alcohol-related consequences. So really just wanted to um, talk about sort of the partnership we are in with family members as we think about and talk about this with students that are gonna be coming to campus. 
Next slide, Emily. All right, I'm gonna jump back in. Um, we know that three things are true. There are a lot of students on campus. There are a lot of resources on campus. Um, and it can be challenging to know where to start at times. Uh, and so this brings us back to the continuing, the continuum that Mary Jo was mentioning uh, with, with alcohol use. No matter where students are uh, with regard to values, relationships, alcohol, and other drug use, uh, there are multiple ways to find connections here at the University of Michigan. And student life uh, plays a central role in that. Next slide, please. Um, so on this slide, uh, we are referencing a few of the online programs uh, that students are asked to complete. Um, so in the next few weeks, all first year students will complete a total of three online programs that promote individual autonomy, community values, and a multifaceted approach to prevention. Uh, so two of these courses will be completed before your student arrives to campus in mid-August. Uh, that is at the Alcohol EDU uh, program and sexual assault prevention. Uh, these specifically address harm reduction strategies that are relevant to college campuses across the nation. As Mary Jo mentioned, uh, we encourage your students to check their email and would appreciate your help in, in helping them to remember to do so and set aside time uh, for these important pre-arrival online courses uh, that will help with their transition to college. Uh, and once on campus, uh, students will complete an online program exploring decision making, relationships, sex and consent, uh, bystander intervention, and building safer communities. And that's through the Community Mat Matters program. And um, we do have a little bit of information about first year experience here on this slide, um, but uh, later on in the presentation, we have a resource slide that will uh, provide contact information for all of these different resources on campus. And if you'll go to the next slide. Uh, so it, I'm thinking beyond uh, these required programs for our student, let's get back to ways uh, for students to get involved. Uh, student engagement is an important part of college life uh, that students seek out based on their interests. Uh, there are many ways for students to get involved in causes, opportunities, student organizations that are in alignment with their values and passions. Uh, and remember, there are a lot of ways to engage. Um, that's not just attending large events. Uh, this is why there are other Welcome to Michigan uh, webinars that are so important to attend and, and learn from. And I will pass it to you, Mary Jo. So we've, we've talked about this uh, um, several times during the webinar today, but really what you can do. We talked about the partnership. Um, the first thing is to talk to your student about their overall well-being to start to use the language of sort of all the dimensions of their well-being and keep talking and asking questions as the semester progresses. And to, to think about how to ask that question beyond just how are they doing in class, um, to think about them sort of and ask those questions in that more holistic way. Um, to think about how they are going to approach their plans for engaging at U of M, right? It's so funny because I'll have parents call me and say, my student says there is absolutely nothing to do at U of M except drink. <laughs> I just want you to know that is not true <laughs> at all. Um, but to have that conversation with them and how might they engage and think about what's going to be in alignment with their values and what they want to do to get out of their Michigan experience. Research also says that the first six weeks can define the entire college experience. And so we really think about sort of what we're all doing. Um, it, some, it is not uncommon for a student to, to um, get really afraid in that first week. Like, what have I done? What am I doing here? Right? And, and as opposed to maybe 30 years ago, where they might talk to campus resources, what we know now is usually the first contact is to a family member or home, right? 
And so creating this web where we can say we have resources to support them and we program for that. And then really uh, we'll talk about how to bridge resources or establish care if your student is struggling or comes into a hard time. So Emily, if you go to that next slide. So um, many students um, have had really amazing established care wherever they were going from and might wanna continue that, right? And so we think about some of the big categories where we think about establishing or bridging care, mental health with counseling and psychological services and even our own university health services, which can really help students do that, physical health, university health services, and then really for the alcohol and other drug use, Wolverine Wellness, the Collegiate Recovery Program, and CAPS. And one of the things I was, would say is that instead of them sort of leaving their established care and sort of coming to campus hoping it works out okay, one of the things we can do is actually build that bridge so that the support stays underneath the student so they feel the opportunity to really um, stay grounded to resources and support. I know we've thrown a lot at you. And so, I, so I'm gonna sort of uh, tie this slide up a little bit where I began is the Dean of Students can always be this great resource to help you and your student navigate all the resources that they have to bridge or establish care. Um, so that will be a point resource. I was telling folks the other day, I probably talk to a parent once a week. Um, that's not uncommon. And even if I can't answer the question, it may be something that Felicia or Felicia's unit can answer. We're doing that really warm handoff for students um, so that we're making sure that we're making those connections. Uh, this is the resource slide um, that uh, Felicia promised uh, that has um, uh, the websites, which I think are really helpful for folks, and also a phone number where you can either talk to somebody, leave a message to have somebody call you. But we have mentioned or talked about or referred um, to all of these resources today um, to make sure that you have these, especially as you think about either bridging or establishing care if your student needs that. You can go to the next slide, Emily. So I actually wanna share this other resource for you. Um, this is, um, you'll see that model of well-being on this slide. It's that very colorful, looks like a pinwheel almost. That little um, uh, image is also on Canvas where all your students' courses are. And so when they open up Canvas and they click on that model, they actually come to the student well-being website where they too can navigate all the health and well-being resources on campus. So this is just a screenshot. Um, and it is, I'll put the link to the, or Emily, maybe you can put the link to the actual website. So if parents want to, to poke around on it, but this is something that we really give students so that they can also really sort of self-explore. As you can see, it talks about the well-being being holistic, how they find resources. There's a take a break page that has some mindfulness and cooking demos and all sorts of fun things. There's an event calendar for well-being events that are happening on, cam on campus. And so we also wanna share this with you so that if they are coming back and asking you about resources, you can say, did you find the student well-being site? So just wanted to make sure that you had that as well. Felicia, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Okay, uh, and I'll give Emily a second to, to bring the, the slides back up. Uh, but you may have guessed it. We're going to jump into another poll here soon. One moment. I lost internet, which is something we were talking about before, but we didn't anticipate me losing internet. <laughs> Full of surprises. Okay. Let me make things bigger on my screen as well. Okay, so we have another uh, poll here for you. Uh, and we wanted to think back to all of the, the things we've talked about today from value systems to healthy relationships. Uh, 
And I would love for you to get specific. Uh, what key conversations uh, do you plan to have with your student? A, values and expectations and decision-making. B, elements of a successful student. C, mentions of well-being. D, e, healthy relationships and consent. E, alcohol and other drug use. F, first year experience, online programs, or G, bridging or an establishing care on campus. What do we have in the chat? Getting a lot of all of the above again. Um, and then some people saying that they've started these discussions. Um, some of them have already been started, some they'll have to revisit, um, which is great. Um, a lot of A through D as well. Um, and then just the elements of a successful student and again, lots of all of the above. Yes, this is wonderful. It sounds like folks here have an understanding of what the next conversations and the continued conversations will look like. So kudos to all of you. Thank you so much for having these conversations um, with your students. And Emily, if you'll go to the next slide, uh, we also want to thank you uh, for your time and attention today uh, and for asking your questions. Uh, we truly couldn't do this without you. Uh, thank you so much for your partnership as we support students here at the University of Michigan. Uh, so take care, everybody, uh, and go blue. Um, we do have a couple of quick questions in the chat. Um, yes, this was recorded and it will be published in about a week. If you Google getting to know Michigan webinars, you will be able to um, find it there. Um, and then let's see, if a student wants to go to counseling, are the sessions limited and then the student needs to find private counseling or is it available on an ongoing basis? Yeah, that is the, so there, there is, that will be a conversation with the student and the individual therapist that they talk to. So there's lots of it, but if we're talking about CAPS, which is counseling and psychological services, there are lots of different ways that a student can actually access care. They may actually sign up to do a group. They may sign up for individual therapy. They may sign up for, I wanna do a couple sessions and then see how I do and then come back later. So what the, there's not a prescription or like a, a, you've hit this exact number and you're done. What they'll do is continue to have a conversation with what, what, what is the best tool for that student. So it could look like one-on-one, -on -one, it could look like a group, it could look like do two or three and then have um, a, a follow-up later on, but that really will be decided between the student and the therapist at CAPS. Um, and we have one more question, it looks like in the Q&A, how can students find out about social activities that do not include alcohol or other substances, for example, around football games or holidays such as Halloween or St. Patrick's Day? Um, that's a, such a great question. And so a couple things I would say are, um, if they're in housing, their RA is gonna be a great resource for all the things that are happening. And, and some of that might be on the floor level, some of that might be in the hall level, and some of that might be bigger because they know sort of what's happening on campus. Another great resource for um, social events is uh, the Center for Campus Involvement, CCI, which we call. Um, they actually host late night sober socials that are really fun and they have it at the union and they have it on north campus and they they have music they have comedians they have movies um really popular program called umix um, and that gets widely pop, um, publicized and so that would be another place to check but that's a great question um, and uh, social events we will also be sending out a, a weekly email to students about sort of fun things to do. And that, those kinds of events are also in that weekly email. Um, great, yeah, that's, Umix is a really great event. Lots of free food. Tell, tell your students that there's tons of free food um, if that will get them in the door. 
Um, and then one other question, when a student contacts CAPS to speak with a therapist, is there typically a long wait? And what is the average wait time? Um, I might have to defer to my CAPS colleagues uh, to, to answer this question. And I know that they are doing a webinar um, as part of the webinar series. But one of the things I can tell you is the CAPS website is really a great resource for all of us. They put the wait time on there, um, right on the website. And so it fluctuates. As you can imagine, there are what we would consider sort of more surge times for the demand for counseling and psychological services. It goes sort of in a, a little bit of a dip and valley or a hill and valley. Um, but they, they really try to make sure that students have what we call an initial access conversation um, very, very quickly so that they can really sort of not like triage, but understand sort of what the need is and then place the student appropriately. So I think um, that that would be my best answer for you, but to also just really defer to the CAPS and counseling, counseling and psychological services for more specifics. Can I add one thing to that? Please. Um, yes, uh, I think attending the, the CAPS uh, webinar that's coming up will be great. And on the website, on the CAPS website, they have a lot of access to uh, some technology and apps that students can download at any time and uh, seek out some, some resources and some skill building tools for uh, mindfulness, stress relief, and it's just another great uh, opportunity for students to uh, get some of the, the support that they're looking for uh, as they might wait to um, get in contact with CAPS. Felicia, thank you for adding that because I think it's really an important reminder that we have so many resources that support mental health that might not be traditional counseling. For instance, we have wellness coaching as well for students who might wanna sit and talk to a wellness coach. We have some, uh, I think about some of our students who are LGBTQ might think about going to the Spectrum Center. That's where they might get some support. So there is lots of ways that we support student mental health. CAPS is definitely foundational for sure. And we have a lot of other resources on campus for students to engage around conversations about their own well-being. I do not see any more questions in the chat or Q&A as of right now. Wonderful. Well, thank you all again for spending time with us and uh, for helping us to support uh, students here at the University of Michigan. Um, take care and enjoy the rest of your day, your Wednesday. Thanks all.